Hi, I'm Dustin Abbott. Most of us know the DJI brand above all for their drones. Maybe you also know them for gimbals or microphones or other cine-based accessories, but now they have expanded into the realm of power stations, though there is some kind of overall synthesis between their various product lines. They have a few bonuses in the case of the DJI Power 1000 that I'm reviewing here for those of you that already own their better drones. The Power 1000 stands out above all for having an extremely robust inverter that will provide up to 2200 watts of continuous output, the ability to provide a sustained surge power for at least 30 seconds in the 2600 watt range, and then all the way up to a brief surge power of 4,400 watts for those big devices that just have a lot of extra draw at startup. That's well above what most other units are going to offer in this price point, which is well under $1,000. And so that stands to me as being a particular area of strength. Now, there's other areas that I am less impressed. And so I'm going to detail everything here as a part of this review. Now, while the inverter is extremely impressive here, I would say that it somewhat outclasses the overall battery storage. We have 1,024 watt hours of battery storage uh, using high quality LFP cells. And while that's good, it's certainly not as exceptional as what the inverter specs are. Here we have batteries that are rated for up to 4,000 charge cycles. That's up to 70%. And so that gives you well over 10 years of daily recharge cycles. And so obviously that it's gonna last you for a long time, bottom line. As noted in the intro, one of the main things that this unit is built around is a proprietary bi-directional port here. And there's actually two on the Power 1000, only one on the Power 500. But on the Power 1000, we have what they call both an SDC and then an SDC Lite. Now, ironically, there isn't any difference between, at least right now, between the specifications for either the SDC or the SDC Lite. But as noted, they are bi-directional. And what I mean by that is you can both receive power input, but then also output power through these ports. And it's these ports in specifically that you can use to fast charge various DJI drone batteries. And you can save about 20 minutes in many cases of that charge. And so if you're using this kind of on site, maybe you're out in the wilderness somewhere and you're doing a lot of drone related footage, this is where this could really come in handy while also pro probably providing for other of your needs on site, camping or whatever the case may be. So for example, with the Mavic 3, you can go from a 10% to a 95% charge in approximately 32 minutes. Again, saving about 20 minutes, which can be very, very useful. With the Air 3, you can go from 10% to 95% charge in about 30 minutes. With the Inspire 3, you can go from 10% to 95% in about 28 minutes. And if you're using both of these ports, advantage being also you can, you can charge two of those simultaneously with the fast charging. And then with the Matrice 30, you can go from 10% to 95% in approximately 32 minutes. And so that's going to be a really positive feature for those of you that are already invested in DJI's uh, kind of drone infrastructure there. Now the input for the AC is rated up to 1200 watts. Solar is, as well, I'll detail a little bit more in a moment, solar is a little bit more complicated, but each one of these ports technically can receive up to 400 watts of solar input, though I'll detail some of the complications as a part of that. The unit itself does not have an IP rating, and so you're going to need to protect it, though they do have this optional bag that you can store it in that is going to be able to provide uh, protection for it and make it a little bit more useful, and by the way, also easier to transport uh, when out using it in the elements. I really like this bag, by the way. It's very well executed, lots of extra storage on it, and the fact that it has the ability to carry it one hand means that rather than carrying with two hands, you can actually quite easily carry this with one hand. More on that in just a moment. There's a five-year warranty here. The unit itself weighs 28.6 pounds or about 13 kilograms. And so, I mean, it's certainly very manageable as far as the overall weight. And uh, certainly I've used much, much heavier units than this one. The overall dimensions is it is 17.6 uh, inches in width or 448 millimeters, 9.1 inches in height, 8.9 inches in depth, so that's 230 by 225 millimeters. 
One thing that this is lacking that a lot of times units will have, particularly for, you know, kind of around camping or power outages, there's no kind of light on here anywhere. And so if you're looking for to have some light, maybe while you're getting things set up in the dark, that's going to be lacking here. You're going to need to provide that elsewhere. As has become increasingly common with these units, there is no external power brick, but rather you're just using a pretty standard AC cord to plug it in, and that does enable it to have some UPS functionality. Uh, and the UPS works quite well with a turnover time of 0.02 seconds. And so good enough to, even with fairly sensitive equipment, you can handle that uh, pass over quite quickly there. Now, as far as the ports here, there is no wireless pad if you're looking for something like that. What is interesting and unique here is there's also not any kind of 12 volt uh, car output, kind of this you know standard, what we used to call cigarette lighter type input here. And so our output, and so that is something that you're going to have to handle again via adapter. Now the idea of adapter is going to become a pretty common theme because because they're using these proprietary STC ports, they just have to use adapters to get to pretty much everything else. And so more on that as we go. We do have two 120 volt grounded plugs, again, 2200 watts total between those. We have two USB-A ports. These are a little bit more high powered than I've seen in any of these units previously. You can get up to a 24 watt output uh, through the USB-C or USB-A ports, which is useful. USB-C ports are also extra powered here, uh, enabling output of 140 watts a piece. So again, the total potential of 280 watts out via USB-C, which is a lot of power for that. Now, one interesting thing here for your input for your charging via AC, is there's actually a switch right here on the front that allows you to go between either a 1200 watt maximum input or a 600 watt maximum input. The idea around here is that you can really control the sound. If you set it on the 600 watt input, it makes basically no sound while you're charging it. But what I find is that this unit in general is just extremely quiet. And even when charging it at the higher setting, it's much quieter than other typical units uh, when charging charging in that aspect. Now I noted that right now there is no specification difference between the SDC and the SDC Lite. And I don't know really how to differentiate them at this point because specification wise, they're identical ports. I'm assuming that there will be at some point in the future, they're expanding the functionality of these in some ways. And there is some hint even that through firmware, they might address that in the future. But at the moment you have basically two redundant ports. And again, these are a proprietary input. And so that means that even for or solar, as I'll get to in just a second, you're going to need to use some form of adapter for getting input into it because I'm not aware of any solar panels at the moment that have this proprietary input or output form on the cables. Now I did a variety of tests as I always do with these units just to see how they're going to handle a variety of situations. So this is an extremely powerful inverter. So there's going to be very few household items and even power tools that are going to be able to really phase this. And so it's going to be able to run pretty much everything and everything that I did throw into, I could run no problem. And so I did a 1500 watt uh, electric tea kettle and uh, I was able to obviously that's well within the power rating of this and it showed zero hesitation, ran everything just fine. But what really stood out to me is not so much that it could run it, which I obviously quiet. expected from the specification, but that it did it without any kind of loud fan sound coming on. Uh, th this is a really incredibly quiet unit. And so that may be one huge advantage for you if you need to work in a really quiet environment, because certainly it was able to handle that even, you know, a fairly heavy load without making any kind of really obvious noise. I was able to run both a, uh, 1200 watt and then 1100 watt blender, two different blenders without any issue. I ran a toaster without any kind of problem. I was able to run my wife's hair dryer, which draws rated at 1875 watts. I was able to run that with no issues as well. I was looking for something to run a heavy load to run it all toward, way towards the end. And so, uh, and something that needed to deplete a lot of battery because we started off in the 50% range or so. And also I wanted to kind of run it into the ground, so to speak, and to see if it could continue to sustain that great power output even as the batteries depleted. And so I had my wife, she was going to do some ironing. So I had her hook up the iron and run it off of this unit. And so I just checked in periodically to see how the draw was going and uh, how 
it would get to depletion. So I actually managed to be there right at the moment that it actually uh, finally conked out. And so it actually was still showing a 6% charge level at that point. So I'll give it a little bit of a knock for, for that, not showing, you know, actually getting down to 0%. But what I will also say is that she was able to keep ironing with that heavy draw, sometimes well over 1,800 watts, and it was just continuing to draw consistently. And so there wasn't any kind of fade of power. And I've seen these kind of units cheat before where they don't output the same power as they get towards the end to try to extend the overall run time. In this case, it was able to run right towards the end. I did things like charging an e-bike battery, something that could be useful. Again, if you were out kind of camping or overlanding and wanting to go out on trails on the e-bike, it was able obviously to do that with no problem. Even as a photographer, I was interested in the potential of running lights for kind of a portrait setting or filming and obviously able to do that no problem. The light I was using, main light was drawing about 200 watts and so it could run for quite a long time and sustain that without issue. I also did obviously the charging side of things and so I charge via solar and AC. Now I ran into some complications when it came to solar. So solar charging, because it's a proprietary input, you have basically a couple of options for that. Now, if you have the typical car adapter here, which is going to allow you to charge from cigarette lighter, it actually has an input that is a standard XT60 connection point there. And so I was actually able to connect a single solar panel uh, to that and run it into the kind of the proprietary plug here. What I found is that I was limited to only a 200 watt panel. I tried hooking up through this means a 400 watt panel and I got zero input from it. So they have a more dedicated solar solution, but again, it's another accessory and that is this MPPT um, adapter here that's gonna allow you to actually connect three different XT60 uh, ports into it. So if you're receiving the input from as much as three different solar panels per each one. And by the way, you can hook two of these up to the actual two different STC ports you have on here. But what I found is that I still felt like my solar was a little bit limited. I mean, obviously you're having to add on an accessory. This accessory can be attached right to the chassis of the actual, you know, the actual power station itself. But again, it's something that kind of sticks out. You've got a cord sticking out here. It's just, it's not a, to me, it's not a very elegant solution. Now, as mentioned, DJI has a little bit of a different approach when it comes to solar charging. And I can't say that I'm necessarily a big fan of that. You have to obviously, as mentioned, have to use the MPPT controllers so you can get multiple inputs. But I will say that the solar panels that they sell as a sister company or under the company umbrella, they sell them under the Zen Yes brand. But these uh, solar panels are really fantastic. Now, they only come as, at least from what I've seen, in 100 watt configurations as I've got here. So I would like to see, you know, maybe a 200 watt configuration. At the same time, I have seen as much as 95, 96 watts off of these panels, which is really, really fantastic efficiency. Uh, better than what I'm typically going to see out of them. I also really appreciate that they have a, a very nice form factor here to where they fold up into a nice compact package. They have a, a carrying strap that makes them very easy to bring along, but obviously very easy to pack away. And then also I appreciate the fact that the cord itself is three meters or about 10 feet long. So that gives you a little bit more flexibility on placing them and being able to run them to the place where you actually have the particular module that you're trying to charge. So while I actually prefer the AC charging on this particular unit, the fact that you can get up to 1200 watts of input is very appreciated. I'm not as big of a fan of the actual solar charging process, but I do actually really like the solar panels themselves. So how about some things that I like? I love the very powerful inverter that's unfazed by everything I threw out it. I feel like the unit is pretty easy to carry around. And so if not absolutely lightweight for this class, I feel like the weight was well maintained. I really like the optional bag. Now again, like a lot of these accessories, you're spending extra money to get to this, but as noted, I really did like the bag itself. I like the fact that you can charge it fairly quickly via AC, a little less impressed on the uh, you know charging via solar, which is my preferred way to do. 
I feel like there's a fairly good price to performance ratio with the unit and that you're getting a lot of uh, power as far as the inverter for a reasonable amount of money. Obviously, if you own DJI's drones, the ability to fast, char fast charge those drones. Unfortunately, I, don't, I do have a DJI drone, but not one that is compatible with the fast. I think I have the Air 2, so not something that's compatible with the fast charging there. And so I wasn't able to test that aspect. I like the fast UPS uh, switchover, and the, again, just having UPS functionality in these to me is pretty huge. I love how quiet it is. This is the quietest unit that I've ever used, so I was very impressed by that, particularly under, under a noise load. I also thought it was kind of cool that even the various noises that are made as you turn it on and off or you turn on different functions, it actually is your typical DJI sounds. And so it's similar to, you know, either their drones or their gimbals. So I thought that was kind of cool. How about some things that I don't like? Well, I don't like that it doesn't have an IP rating. And it's something I think that more of these units should aspire towards. In theory, these are designed to use outdoors, camping, overlanding, things like that. And so just having a little bit more protection on them, I think would be valuable. Something I was actually surprised by that this is lacking is any kind of Bluetooth control. And so if you know you don't have the ability to remotely monitor it uh, via a Bluetooth app and so or to you know set various settings. And so I was surprised by that and that's an area where it's lacking compared to a lot of competitors at this point. I really don't love the fact that this proprietary SDC input means that you have to buy adapters for pretty much everything. Now, they're not overly expensive with the adapters. You know, some of these, you know, standard adapters are going to cost you uh, about $19, $20 for them. So that's not too bad. But of course, when you get into something like the MPPT controller, it's like another $60, et cetera, et cetera. And having to use adapters for everything all the time just means that I feel like it's a little clunkier in operation. As I noted previously, it's not an elegant solution. I also found that while I like that if you're going to have to use this adapter that you can mount it to the side of the unit, I also found that it no longer fit into the bag quite as well. I can force it in there, but much diff more difficult to get it in and out. And so again, I didn't love that part of it. And I would say as a negative, you probably need to anticipate spending probably an additional $100 if you really want to unlock the full functionality because it is so reliant on adapters and using this proprietary type solution. So right now, I noticed at B&H Photo, this is currently available for 699 US, and that feels like a very strong value. It's less of a strong value at the full $1,000 MSRP, and I suspect that a lot of times you're probably going to find some price variation between these, those two points. They'll probably never at the full pop, but maybe not always at a $700 level. And I think at the $700 level, I could definitely recommend it as a good value. My conclusion is this. I like the powerhouse nature of the inverter and also the, the various DC outputs are, you know, they have a lot of potential to them. I don't love that it has less overall outputs than a lot of competing units do. I definitely do not like having to attach adapters and accessories to achieve even common functions. And so I would recommend the Power 1000 primarily if you are attracted to the idea of the drone integration. Maybe you're already invested in the DJI ecosystem and this is something that's really going to add extra function and value to you. That other units are not going to match. If you're not in that case, or if you don't value the idea, if you maybe you're looking at the SD, SDC infrastructure and saying, oh, I see a lot of potential in that with you know, both input and output, then great. I think you need to just kind of consider its main appeal here as being something that is valuable to you yourself. And if it's not, there's a lot of other alternative units that will offer a lot of similar specifications and have some other advantages in other areas. But it's really, if you're going to use this infrastructure for your drones or other accessories that is going to make the most sense. I'm Dustin Abbott, and if you want more information, you can find links in the description down below, both to my text review and then also some buying links there. As always, thanks for watching. I hope this has helped. Have a great day and let the light in.